perfect square trinomials. What is a perfect square trinomial? Well, to start with, let's just practice a little factoring. x squared plus x minus 12. Okay, so we know that we lead off with x's. This is a minus. That only comes from having a minus and a plus. I need two numbers that multiply to 12 and differ by 1, and the larger one is positive. So that would be, of course, 4 and 3. Quickly foiling x squared plus 4x minus 3x is plus 1x minus 12. This is positive. That says that both have the same sign, and that says they're both negative. Two numbers that multiply to 25 and add up to 10 are 5 and 5 x squared minus 5x minus another 5 is minus 10x plus 25. Plus 64 says both factors have the same sign. This says they're both positive. Two numbers that multiply to 64 and add to 16 will be 8 and 8. x squared plus 8x plus another 8x plus 64. Or sorry, that's 16x plus uh, 64. x plus x minus. Two numbers that multiply to 15 and differ by 2 are 5 and 3, the larger of which will be negative 5 and 3. x squared minus 5x plus 3x is minus 2x minus 15. Uh, this is a plus. Both factors have the same sign, which is negative. Two numbers that multiply to 9 and add to 6 are 3 and 3. x squared minus 3x minus another 3x is minus 6x plus 9. Three, the, three of these examples are called perfect square trinomials because when factored, they can be written as a binomial squared. So this could be written x minus 5 squared. This could be written x plus 8 squared. This could be written x minus 3 squared. Put a circle around the perfect square trinomials. And this one, more of an oval. If we can recognize it's a perfect square trinomial before we factor it, this can help us factor more efficiently. Three perfect square trinomials factored, oh, sorry, circled, are of the form x squared plus bx plus c. Make a statement about the b and the c value. So you can see, uh, c, get it, c. You can see that the c values are all perfect squares, and that the b values are, well, the square root of 25 is 5, double that, you get 10. Square root of 64 is 8, double that, you get 16. Square root of 9 is 3, double that, you get 6. So the C value has a square root. B value is double the square root root of C. So for perfect square trinomial of the form x squared plus bx plus C, so if we take half the B value and square it, we'll get c. We're just sort of undoing this, right? It'd be like double the square root of c. So if we take double, we undouble it, we take half of the b value, and we square it, we will get the value of c. And c will always be a number that is a perfect square. It could be a rational number. Or you could say a whole number. It's actually, yeah, it's because it's 
it's positive. C has to be positive. Circle all the trinomials that are considered perfect square trinomials and write them in factored form. Hint, since C is greater than zero, can you eliminate any right away? Yeah, anything that's negative. So this is gone, right? Since the C value has to be greater. Uh, this is a perfect square, 25, but, or, you know, if we're looking at it this way, so half of 12 is 6, squared is 36, so that won't do it. Half of 4 is 2, squared is 4, so that is. Uh, another way to do it is the square root of 49 is 7, doubled is 14. The square root of 100 is 10, doubled is 20, or half of 20 is 10, squared is 100. Half of 14 uh, is 7, squared is 49. Usually what I do is I look to see if the C value is a perfect square, and then to see if the B value is double the square root of that. So I'm going to say b is equal to 2 times the square root of the c. Just just really um, kind of, you know, square root both sides here, and you get uh, b over 2 equals root c, and that leads to b is equal to 2 times the square root of c. Factor each of the following. <coughs> Okay, well, this is not a perfect square, so this leads with 2x and x. The numbers here are going to be 1 and 5. 1 is negative and 1 is positive. Uh, so it'll be negative 5 and positive 1. Let's check that out. 2x squared plus 2x minus 5x is minus 3x minus 5, so that works. Uh, Two x, two x. Everything's positive. That's a plus. That says both factors have the same term. This says they're both positive. Four x squared plus ten x plus another ten x is twenty x plus twenty five. Three x. Darn, you're good. 9x squared minus 3x minus another 3x is minus 6x plus 1. Four x squared plus 6x plus another 6x is plus 12x plus 9. Two x squared plus ten x plus one x is plus eleven x plus five. Three of these are perfect square trinomials, which means that they are the square of a binomial. In this case, I'm just writing these out. So circle the ones. Now these are of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Make a statement about the a, b, and c values. Okay, what statement can we make about the a, b, and c values? Well, let's see. This 25 has a square root, which is 5. This has a square root, which is 2. 2 times 5 is 10, and double gives you 20. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 1 is 1. 3 times 1 doubled is 6. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 9 is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. Doubled is 12. So I think that the B value is equal to double <coughs> the square root of A times C. So multiply A times C, take that square root, and double it, and you get the B value.
value. And there's another way to say this, right? So b over 2 is equal to root ac. If we square both sides, then b over 2 is equal to ac. a and c are both positive. And they're both perfect squares. So really what I look for is this. <clears throat> when I'm looking at a perfect square trinomial, does this have a square root? Yes, it does. Does this have a square root? Yes, it does. Square root of this is 2x. Square root of this is 5. 5 times 2x is 10x. Doubled, 20x. Square root of 9x squared is 3x. Square root of 1 is 1. 3x doubled, 6x. Now this could be plus or minus, but this is always plus, and this is always plus. Square root of 4x is 2x, square root of 9 is 3, 2x times 3 is 6x, doubled gives you 12x. So that's what I look for when I'm looking to see if I'm dealing with a perfect square trinomial. Square root of 4x squared is 2x, square root of 1 is 1, 1 times 2x is uh, 2x doubled is 4x. That's not a square root, nor is it negative, uh, positive, right? It's got to be positive and have a square root. It's got to be positive and have a square root, and there's no common factoring going. Square root of this is 3x. Square root of this is 2. 2 times 3x is 6x. Doubled is 12x. Square root of 25x squared is 5x. Square root of 4 is 2. 5x times 2 is 10x, doubled is 20x. Oh, and write them in factored form. So here's how you do the factored form. You take the square root of the first term. You take the sine of the middle term. You take the square root of the last term. And you write it as squared. 3x, this sign, minus 2 squared. 5x, this sign, minus this, square root, 2 squared. Completely factory to the following. Remember to always look for a common factor first. So what I want to see, no common factor here. Does this have a square root? 1. Does this have a square root? 4. 1 times 4 is 4. Doubled is 8. So this is x, this sign, plus this square root, 4 squared. No common factor, a minus 6 squared. Square root of a squared is a, square root of 36 is 6, 6 times a is 6a, doubled is 12a, and it's got to have this sign, minus uh, 9, 30, and 25, no common factor. That has 5s going into it. That has 3s and stuff. This is a square root. Or sorry, it is a perfect square. Its square root is 3x. Square root is 5. 3x times 5 is 15x. Doubled is 30x. So we go 3x plus square root of that squared. Uh, common factor? Nope. Square root of this, 4x. Square root of this, 3 4x times 3 is 12x, doubled is 24, so 4x, this sign, minus 3 squared. And that will work out to this. Common factor of 2, x squared minus 18x plus 81, x minus Square root of x is x, square root of 81 is 9, 9x, doubled is 18x. Uh, what do we got here? I don't like negative leading terms, so we'll pull the negative 2. We've got a t here. Uh, we got t squared plus 14t minus 49. I always get suspicious when that's a perfect square. Square root of this is t. Square root of 49 is 7. Oh, wait, but oh, hang on, i got to change signs here. So, uh, better be right.
focusing. And I don't need to erase to change that to a plus. So negative 2t squared, that makes this negative and makes this positive. Square root of t squared is t, square root of 49 is 7, 7 times t is 7t, doubled is minus 14t. Negative, oops, negative 2t, factor t minus 7, quantity squared. Move down, move down, move down, move down. If each of the following are perfect square trinomials, then state the value of k. Okay, square root of this is 1. Square root of this is something. And we know that this times this doubled has to be 2, so this has to be a 1. x squared plus 2x plus 1. Or stating k is equal to 1. Okay, square root of this is 1. Square root of this has to be half of that, so it'll be 5. So k equals 25, right? and we get x minus 5 squared. This will be x plus 1 squared. The square root of 9x squared is 3x. 3x times this doubled has to give me 6x. Well, 3x doubled gives me 6x, so this is a... 1, that's 9x squared plus 6x plus 1, and let's clean it up, we're going to say k is equal to 1, uh, you know, and it just said state, so we don't have to show anything other than, you know, here's the value, here's the value. Each of the following are perfect square trinomials, then state all the values of k. So this time we're playing it by making uh, the b value k. The square root of x squared is 1. The square root of 121 is 11. 1 times 11 doubled is 22. So k is equal to plus or minus 22, right? Since we could have k plus 11 squared or k minus 11 squared. Square root of 4x squared is 2x. Square root of 9 is 3. 2x times 3 is 6x. Doubled is 12. So k is plus or minus 12. And you just want to check um, values. Make sure that they, they work. So you could put the 12 in here and then just sort of verify, does that work? And is that a perfect square trinomial? And the answer is yes, yes it is. Next up, difference of squares. So before we do that, let's just hit this again. And so the important thing is, if you recognize, first term and last term are both squares. So they have square roots, first term, whoops last term are both squares. You take their square roots, 3x and 5, multiply them together to get 15x, double it, you get 30x. Then the factorization is, take the square root of 3x, of 9x squared, which is 3x, take this sign, plus, or here, minus, but take this sign, and take the square root of the last term and put that in. So it's 3x plus 5 uh, squared, quantity squared. Now, let's go down to factoring a difference of squares. So what's going to happen here is we're going to be looking for two terms. So let's FOIL this out. We get x squared minus 5x plus 5x minus 25, which is x squared minus 25. That's kind of of the form we're looking at up here, right? Here we get a squared minus 7a plus 7a minus 49. 
which is a squared minus 49. And here, let me clean this up. Bing, 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 bing. Okay, 16x squared minus 12xy plus 12xy minus 9y squared equals 16x squared minus 9y squared. Now, you should notice that when you multiply two binomials together that are the same, except for the sign, the middle term, I don't know, disappears. So outer and inner cancel is gone. You should also notice that when this happens, the result is two perfect squares, things that have square roots. And all of these are perfect squares. So if the simplified form of x plus y times x minus y is x squared minus y squared, then a binomial that is a difference of squares can be factored into x plus y, x minus y. So into two binomials. So we end up with a binomial instead of our usual trinomial. But what's special is that the two binomials this factors into have opposite signs in the middle, and you get x squared minus xy plus xy. So the outer and the inner terms together are going to cancel, and you just end up with really the first term, which is x squared, right, first, and the last, which is minus y squared. Okay, so that's the difference of squares that requires a minus sign, something squared minus something else squared. Factor, b squared minus 64, is there a common factor? No. Now here's the thing, when you're looking at two terms, it's either common factoring or a difference of squares. Yes, it is a difference of squares. Put down two brackets, take the square root of the first term, which is b, add the square root of the second term, Take the square root of the first term, subtract the square root of the second term. Common factor? Nope. Well, and it goes in 25s. Nope. It's a difference of squares? Yes. Does that have a square root? It is 5. Does this have a square root? It is 3a. And then we take 5 minus 3a. Now you can FOIL it out. 25. Minus 15a plus 15a is 0a minus 9a squared. Is there a common factor? Yes. 4. So that'll give us 4 bracket 9x squared minus y squared. And this is a binomial, or this binomial is a difference of squares. So we go 4, square root of the first term plus the square root of the second, square root of the first term minus the square root of the second. Now, if you didn't recognize the common factor, you'd still say this is a square, this is a square, so it is a difference of squares. 6x plus 2y, 6x minus 2y. So I could take a 2 out of this. 3x plus y. And I can factor a 2 out of this. 3x minus y. Really meaning that we have 2 plus 2 is 4. And 2 times 2 is 4. And 3x plus y. B squared plus 64. Common factor, no. Difference of squares, no. Be very emphatic, no. Let's just write that as a no. I almost started as a yes. 
I'll explain why it's not a difference. This is a plus. It's plus, not minus. Is there a common factor? No. Difference of squares? No. 20 is not a square. Remember, in order to factor using this method, it needs a binomial that is a difference. You're going to see the minus of two perfect squares, right? So each term on either side of the minus sign will be a perfect square, which this is not, right? It means that it has a square root. Completely factor each of the following if possible. Remember to always look for common factor first. Difference of squares, n plus 3, n minus 3. Both squares, difference of squares, 9 plus x, 9 minus x. Not a difference of squares, no common factoring, nothing to do. Difference of squares. 12x plus y, 12x minus y, difference of squares, 1 plus 8xy, 1 minus 8xy. You may have to dig around a fair bit to you know, find examples like this. But, uh, w, w squared plus 30. Six, and that's as far as we can go. This will not factor. It is simply two terms. So two terms with a plus sign, if there's any factoring going on, it is only um, a common factor. Let's rewrite this. 25 minus 16 t squared. 5 plus 4 t. 5 minus 4t, which uh, 5 times that's 25, minus 20t plus 20t is gone, 20t is gone, minus 16t squared, yep. Let's factor out an 8, gives me x squared minus 4. This is a perfect square triangle, uh, sorry, difference of squares, so it's 8, x plus 2, x minus 2. Uh, square root, yep, so 10m square root plus 5n. Okay, hang on. I can see a, a common factor there, so that means I really should have seen the common factor here, which is 25. So 25, 4m squared minus n squared. 25, two sets of brackets, square root of this term, 2m plus the n at the end, and 2m minus n. Uh, had we factored it as like 10m minus 5n, we would have had to take out a common factor of the 5. So you can help yourself along a lot by taking the uh, factor. Extreme challenge, completely factor. Actually, you're going to be doing like a ton of this stuff in 20-1, in but for now, this is a bit of a challenge. So let's do a simpler problem. Let little a equal x squared plus 5x. Then I can rewrite this as 2a squared minus 72, which is 2 bracket a squared minus 36, which is 2a plus 6, a minus 6, and it's at this point when we get here, when we say, wait a sec, this was never a, there's no little a anywhere in here. So now I need to go back and substitute in 
a, which is x squared plus 5x plus 6, and x squared plus 5x minus 6. Is this factor? Yeah, it's x plus 2, x plus 3. Does this factor? It's x plus 6, x minus 1 x squared minus 1x plus 6x is plus 5x minus 6. So there we go. That's your full complete factorization of this, which was, you know, the extreme echo chamber challenge. And we are done with perfect square trinomials and difference of squares.